Good morning, church. Welcome to worship, a day where we remember that Jesus resurrected. Jesus is alive and is with us, and that's what we're going to do today, worship, worship God. There are a lot of things happening in the church, but there, I want to just highlight two. Uh, next Sunday, we have house churches, and the registration page is on the website. Uh, we're going to gather uh, in a few houses uh, to watch the service and have conversation. And those of you who cannot m make it to the houses, we're still going to be online worshiping together. Also, on September 27th, we have Mission Sunday, and we're going to have a car wash in four sites. Now, we need you all to sign up to volunteer to wash cars, or to even just hold signs, which is a very important job. So the church is alive and well and open and being the church in this community. Hear now the call to worship for this service. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks because you have brought us here today. We give you thanks because this is the day that you have made. We worship you this morning. We praise your name and we're full of gratitude for everything that you do every day, every single day. Receive our worship this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And join me as we remember, as we repeat uh, what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker on heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. We're excited that you've chosen to spend this time with us, and we can't wait to show you what we have planned. At this time, I invite you to sing our first hymn along with me at home, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. your head you then shall know shall feel your sins forgiven anticipate your heaven below and learn that love is had now we come to the time where we share our prayer requests when uh, we support each other praying for one another there are a lot of prayer requests in our communities. There are uh, people that are looking for jobs. There are uh, people that are facing health issues and tests. Uh, and uh, there, there is a lot of pain and, uh, and anxiety in our community. So let's pray together for uh, those around us, for 
our own families uh, because God listens to our prayers. Let's pray. Loving God, we bring before you the burdens of our hearts. We put before you those who are in hospice, their families and those who care for them. May your healing hand touch them. We pray for those who have lost their jobs and are looking for their jobs. Open the doors that need to be opened so they can uh, provide for their families and uh, they can find jobs that are satisfying and make a difference. We pray this, this morning for uh, the pain uh, that we have remembered during these last few days, for the, the families of those who lost loved ones uh, in 9-11, but also for a whole nation and a whole world who went through this tragedy. May we remember the love that you have shown us and the love that you have asked us to show others every day, even in the darkest of times. We pray uh, this morning for those who are sick, those who are going through tests and waiting for test results. Uh, may your arms embrace them and give them comfort. We pray for our church for this uh, stage that we, have, we are living, may you continue using us uh, in innovative ways to share and bring your gospel to so many that are thirsty to hear that you love them no matter what. And now join me in the language of your heart, uh, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. El pan nuestro de cada día, danoslo hoy, y perdona nuestras ofensas, así como nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. Y no nos dejes caer en tentación, más líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. I remember around three years ago when Kelly and I went to China to get Ben. Uh, the day we walked into the hotel, there was a social worker with Benjamin. So we say hi, we cannot try to get acquainted with him. And then probably after half an hour or 45 minutes, she just left. Uh, so there we are with a two-year-old that didn't speak English. Uh, my Spanish does not translate into Mandarin, so we didn't really know how to communicate with one another. But one of the things that we discovered is that when somebody's hungry, they cry, regardless of the language. So he starts crying because we thought he was hungry, so we got out of the hotel, start walking into some of the streets in China, walk into this, you know, hole in the wall, and uh, we were expecting something like, you know, Panda Express, when you see the pictures of orange chicken and chow mein 
and you get an idea of what you to order, but that was not the case. There was a menu all in Mandarin, there was no pictures, and we just have no idea what to do. So we just start picking off random stuff on the menu. A couple of minutes later, they bring them to the table. Uh, everything looked weird. Uh, nothing was moving, which was a good thing, but everything just looked weird. Uh, and it was one of those moments that me and Kelly were hungry, we believed Ben was hungry, and yet we have no idea what to eat. So we just start putting random stuff in our mouth. Uh, some of them were okay, some of them were a lot worse than okay. And my point of this, this morning, is that it is a dangerous place where you are hungry and yet you don't know what to eat. When you have something in front of you and you don't know what to eat. And what I'm trying to tell you with this is that it matters what you put in your mouth. But the book of Matthew tells us that it is actually more dangerous what comes out of your mouth than what you put in your mouth. And we're going to be talking about that. But just, just join me in prayer, church. God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditation of our hearts be pleasing before you. May I decrease so you may increase this morning. Amen. You see, in the book of Matthew, Jesus says in Matthew 15, 11, we're just going to jump into the scripture. It is not what goes into the mouth that contaminates a person in God's sight. It is what comes out of the mouth that contaminates the person. I mean, in simple words, in simple terms, the words that you speak can sabotage the life that Jesus died for you to have. I'm going to say that one more time. The words that you speak, they can sabotage the lives that Jesus died for you to have. Words matter. Words are weighty. Words can have a heavy impact. If, if you have ever been to a Christmas party when, where you do the, what is it called, the white elephant, right? where there's a bunch of presents, and you're supposed to pick one uh, that is wrapped. I don't know about your strategy. My strategy is always going for the heaviest one. And I'll look at the boxes, and I'll try to see which one is the heaviest one. Now, there's always a risk that somebody will put a brick in a box. But most, most of the times, my thinking is something heavy is something valuable. Something heavy is something expensive. Something heavy is something that is worth something. And we should have the same analogy when it comes down to words. Words have a heavy and a weighty value. And I know I'm speaking about, you know, when you speak through your mouth. And just for the record, in this DNA, I mean, you have to count also what you speak through your thumbs on your phone, on your laptop, on your iPad, what you put via email, what you send via text, what you put on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Your words matter. So I want to encourage you that every time you type something, that every time you say something, you ask yourself a question. Are these words contaminating God's world? Right? Because that's what Jesus is saying. Are these words polluting God's world. Words are just like pollution. They can impact people's lives. And I'm going to talk this morning about how words can impact those around you. The words that you speak, the words that you type, can impact those around you. Some studies say that the average person speaks roughly 5,000 words per day. Just think about that. 5,000 words per day. What that means is that you have 5,000 chances every day of doing good through your words or doing bad through your words. As simple as that. 
or speaking healthiness or contaminating, of building up or tearing down. You have 5,000 every day. I mean, why do you think that the rates of suicide are so high in schools, in middle schools or high schools? Because kids are bombarding thousands of words every day of, uh, of, of just contamination. You don't belong here. You are not worth it. You, uh, you shouldn't be here. You are not good enough. What do you think that the, the words of a parent make such a big impact in children? Because if you spend a week with your kids, which most of us of us, you know, do, you, spe you speak 35,000 words to them. And, and it matters what you say to them. You, imagine somebody's telling you 35,000 times a week that you are not good enough. What do you think? You're going to think that you're not good enough. The words that you speak matters to others. Can you think in one of those times when somebody speaks something nice to you, some encouraging words to you? How does that feel? Or imagine if somebody is doing it 5,000 times a day towards you. Imagine if you're getting those words of affirmation 35,000 35, times per week. It will change people's lives. And maybe somebody's thinking, okay, Pastor, I get it. I, my words impact others. I just don't know what to say. Well, let me tell you what Ephesians 4.29 says. Don't let any foul words come out of your mouth. Only say what is helpful when it is needed for building the upcoming, the, for building up the community so that benefits those who hear what it says. I believe what Paul is telling you here is, before you speak any kind of word, ask yourself, will this word build somebody up or will this word tear somebody down? Simple as that. Will this word be a helpful word? Will this word build up the community around you? If, if you have ever played with Legos or, or build a sand castle, you know that every, every grain of salt or sand, that every Lego could either build the structure higher or could tear the whole thing down. And there are kids out there that their sole purpose in life is to tear down sand castles or break down Lego, Lego structures. And you know what happened? Nobody wants to play with those kids. So the question is, what, what, kind of, what kind of kid are you? Are you building sand castles? Are you building Lego structures? Or are you tearing them down? And your words will do that. Your words not only will impact those around you, your words will impact you. The words that you speak will impact you. Every salty comment that you make, every harsh word that you speak, not only will speak, not only will affect your family or your coworkers or your friends, will affect you. Every time you, you speak a racism comment over somebody, every time you discriminate somebody because of the color of the skin, the thickness of their accent, the deepness of their pockets, not only you're tearing people down, you're tearing yourself down as well. Why? For two reasons. The first one, it is you, you are the person that speak, that hear your words the most. Following me? I mean, if you speak 5,000 words a day, you may speak 1,000 words at home, you may speak 1,000 words at, home, at work, you may speak 1,000 words on your neighbor, but at the end of the day, you are speaking the 5,000 words. Those words are shaping you, your thinking, your acting, your feelings. And most of the time, or some of us, we just, we just speak to ourselves. 
I don't know about you, but I found myself talking to myself in the shower, when I'm driving, when I'm in front of a mirror, and it matters what I said to myself. I can build myself up, I can tear myself down. I, I, can, be, I can be my a critic, or I can be a coach. You see, critics, they, they just stand on the side. They have no, no skin on the game. They have no investment. They just tell you that you're bad. That's what critics do. Coaches, they, they have a skin in the game. They, they have invest, invested tears, sweat, blood. There are those who are telling you, you know, that was a mistake. Don't do it again. Stick to the plan. Keep, hus keep hustling. Keep working. And, and, I, and there's a difference when I'm my, my critic or when I'm my own coach. And here's the bottom line. Why you shouldn't speak harsh words to yourself. Because Jesus died for you. At the end of the day, Jesus came and died for you. He loves you. You're his prize. You're, you're the apple of his eyes. He, he has a plan and a purpose for your life. He, he has you written in, in his palm. So you have no right to speak bad to somebody that Jesus loved, somebody that Jesus created, somebody that Jesus has written in his hand. Your words not only can sabotage the life that Jesus died for you to have, your words can build the life that Jesus died for you to have. And just to clarify, I'm not saying that through words we're going to earn salvation. We can't. There's nothing we can do to earn salvation. It is a gracious gift from God that comes through faith. But through our words, we can live into that. So I want to encourage you, wherever you are at home, or at work with those who you are around, either in person or through the screens, whether you're wearing a mask or not, whether you're six feet apart or not, whether you speak English, Spanish, Chinese, or Swahili, whatever it is, wherever you are, with whoever you are, your words matter. Use them to build the kingdom of God. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for, for the words that Jesus gave us this morning. As he's reminding us that our words should build that community around us. God, I pray that in the midst of, of the brokenness of this world, you can put healing words. You can put reconciling words. You can put redempting words. You can put peaceful words. You can put just seeking words in our mouth. God, not only that we will not contaminate the world that you created, but God, that we can reflect heaven on earth. That we can build your kingdom in this place. That we can love people the same way that you love people that we can honor people and see the beauty in people in the same way that you honor and see the beauty in people. And God, that we can be the agents that you want us to be in this world. That is our prayer, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The refrain of our next hymn, He leadeth me by his own hand, he leadeth me. That is something we can all take comfort in, that we always have a leader. I invite you to sing our final hymn, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught, whate'er I do. Hi.
Sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes when Eden's bowers bloom, my water still, or troubled sea still, tis his hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me. Church, we have been fed. Uh, we have praised God. We have been challenged uh, to live the life that God has called us to be. Uh, this morning, I also want to remind us that uh, there is a starting point uh, at 12 online for those who want to know about, more about the Net Church uh, and how you can have a place with us. And now, we are sent forth, remembering that every word we use can build up, that every word we use can share God's love with others. We are sent forth with a challenge of using all of those 5,000 words in ways that give God glory and in ways that build the kingdom. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.